Beauty Top Fitness. I'm Jess and I'm so happy that you're here. Video two. Oh my goodness. So exciting. Hopefully you're working on your goals. Today we're going to go over goal setting and I am here with Deb Devs. This is Deborah from HR. She's my video assistant today. So you'll hear her purring and probably meowing for friskies. We just came from the gym. Um, I looked horrendous so I tried to doll up a little bit so I didn't scare you guys and it is awful trying to put on makeup with a cat in your lap. It is a miracle of God that neither of us lost an eye. Crazy. Just crazy. So last time I gave you your pick of two goals. Either set a goal, a non-scale goal, or start logging your food non-judgmentally. So today we're going to talk about setting goals and then Monday we're going to do a food logging. <clears throat> so we'll go over what you need to log and how to log, different apps, different ways to do it. But today we're going to go over goal setting and how we set goals. We set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, resourced and realistic, and time bound. Let's go and use the example of me with my A1C. Okay, if you say, uh, I want to lower my A1C, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? I want to bring my A1C from 8.9 to less than 6. That's very specific. Measurable, you can have your A1C measured via labs and, and see where you're going, right? Achievable, absolutely achievable. Absolutely achievable. Look at your timeline, right? We don't want to do these things quickly. We don't want to do them too fast. We want to make sure we're doing it the right way, the sustainable way. Uh, resource. Your doctor is a resource. The lab is a resource. Uh, your, if you have diabetes, if you're taking diabetes medication, that is a resource. Do you have access to your diabetes medication? Do, does your insurance pay for a diabetes educator? Some of them do. Some of them actually have diabetic coaches that you can go and speak with anytime if you have questions about your, your carbohydrate exchange, anything like that. Okay. Um, how, are you, how are you gonna get there? How are you gonna measure? How are you gonna, how are you gonna achieve it? Who's involved? That's resourced. And again, realistic. And yes, that is a realistic goal. Time bound. We want to do this within six months, a year, depending. That time bound is flexible. I've had the same goal of doing a pull up for three years in a row and I've made progress. I still can't do a pull up. We're still not there. I've progressed though from doing a full assist pull up, like all of my body weight on the machine to where I can do it now with um, half assist. So I'm pulling up half my body weight. I've definitely made progress and I can measure it because it's going down. The assist weight is going down with each step that I take. Time bound, again, it's a goal carried forward. I'm better than where I was to start with. I'm not there yet. The other thing I wanna talk about with, with goals, especially as it relates to health and wellness and weight, our brains don't work like we think they work. If you frame a goal negatively, I want to lose weight. I want to lose 10 pounds, right? Our brains don't deal with negatives very well. And I'm going to prove it to you just so you, you don't think I'm fibbing. Don't think about a chocolate cake with strawberries on top of it. Anybody not thinking about chocolate cake? Right? Our brains don't recognize the don't part of it. So we want to frame our goals positively. We want to come from a, a mindset of abundance, not a mindset of scarcity. Because for a lot of us, that restriction is what gets us. Oh, we can never have chips again. And, and our little brains explode and we go buck wild. Come from a mindset of abundance. Yeah, I, I want to be a healthy weight. How am I going to get there? I'm going to drink more water. We don't talk about taking away soda, never drinking soda, never drinking sweet tea. I want to drink more water. 
I want to eat more fruits and vegetables, at least six servings a day. I want to add more home cooked meals to my menu. Okay, you see where I'm coming with this, right? We're not taking away anything. We're not saying I'm not drinking soda. I'm not eating chips. I'm not doing takeout. It's an, a, an abundance mindset you're adding to. Our brains are so much more receptive to that than, well, we're not going to do this. As soon as you say we're not going to do it, what do we do? It's all we're thinking about, right? Make sure we're coming from abundance and not scarcity. And what that allows us is when we start making choices related to our goals, A1C, for example, um, I want to improve my A1C. Okay, we, we know in our hearts we want it lower. We want that number lower. When you say improve, your brain starts looking. It starts looking at positives. And when you have a choice between ice cream and an apple, you're going to think, which is going to improve my A1C? And you're going to probably choose the apple. Every now and again, we might choose the ice cream, and we're not going to judge ourselves for that. We know the apple is what's going to get us to our goal. It's got fiber. It's got vitamins. It's got phytonutrients. It's got the good stuff. That's going to help our A1C. It also stops us, those positive frame goals, stops us from the, the negative associations. We all know that dying, dieting can be miserable. You're hungry. You're tired. You're tired of it. A lot of that comes from our mindset, from our thinking, because we feel deprived. That's where that adding to instead of taking away is going to help. It's going to help you feel less deprived. You're not taking away something terrible. You're adding good things. And we'll talk more about mindset and um, as well as thought processes and, and thought stopping and how our brains work. We will dig into the neurobiology. That's, that's a little later though. That's a little later. What's your goal? Tell me, tell me in the comments, what was your non-scale goal? I'm dying to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to hear what your non-scale goal is. And show me in the comments, if you don't mind sharing, how you're going to get there with SMART. Specific, measurable, achievable, resourced and realistic and time bound and let's work on it in there um goals are flexible they're flexible okay you can have goals within goals they're not set in stone one of the best things that i learned on this journey actually came from a dharma talk and the person leading the talk said nothing is permanent even things written in stone are worn away with sand and time. And that, that hit me. That hit me hard. Your goals aren't permanent. Your goals right now aren't going to be your goals a year from now. Okay? This year I had a goal to be able to, I'm sorry, 2022, I had a goal to be able to run a mile nonstop. And I ended up achieving that goal and I ran 1.75 miles non-stop. Okay. Does that mean that my goal is done? No. Now my goal is to be able to run a mile non-stop in under 10 minutes. Okay. So each time you achieve a goal, each time you achieve a milestone, you can revamp it, continue to work on it, and it, it creates habit building. It creates that mindset of, I'm going to keep going. I'm going and I'm, and I'm moving forward. So again, you don't stop with your goals. You, oh, nope. I'm the way I want to be. My A1C is what I want to be. I'm done. And then go back to what you were doing. You create new goals. You can also move dates, move markers, uh, just like with the, the pull-up goal. All right, I have moved that marker. Being able to do a pull-up in a year, for me, was unrealistic. I didn't know that until I was midway through the goal and still had not gotten to the point where I was able to do it. We had to go back and look at it. 
what's a more realistic goal? Being able to do half of my weight unassisted in a pull-up in a year. And I've achieved that. Now we're on to being able to pull up 75% of my weight unassisted in a year. Okay? You don't have to give up on your goal. Just modify it. And we can talk more about modifying goals too um, as we go along. I hope this helped, this talk about goals. Again, positive frame. I want to add more vegetables and fruits. I want to add more water. I want to move more. I want to um, improve my A1C. I want to improve my blood pressure. I want to improve my mobility. I want to improve knee pain. That's one of the things that obesity got me was arthritis. And it's no fun. No fun. So as you're, as you're doing these goals, think about your body to honor your body. Don't set a goal that is so unrealistic that you're going to hurt yourself trying to achieve it. That is not what we want here. Fitness shouldn't hurt. Okay. This should not hurt. Should not hurt. It should not hurt your spirit. It should not hurt your body. It should not hurt your feelings. <laughs> okay. I take that back because sometimes fitness does hurt your feelings. <laughs> it does. <laughs> when you're on the elliptical and it's like, you think you have just gone 30 minutes and you look down and you've been on that sucker 10 minutes, that will hurt your feelings. That'll, that'll make you, that'll put you in your feels real hard, real hard. On the whole though, it should make you feel better. It should make you feel better about yourself and where you're going. And if there's anything, any questions, anything that I can explain further, just let me know. Also, I kind of have a plan for what I want to talk about. And it's, it's got a particular flow. I want to go from basics to more advanced. Again, like we're talking about goals and we're talking about food logging um, Monday. And we're going to talk about macros and nutrition. I have some experts on board that we're going to talk with too about uh, the orthopedics of obesity. And the medical aspect, the psychiatric aspect. I want to know what you guys want to know. What do you want me to talk about? If there's something specific, leave it below and we will absolutely work it in. This is a, a community effort. This isn't just me. This is everybody. And I want to meet you where you are. If there's something that you need that I'm not addressing or it's not on deck to be addressed, holler. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. So, again, working through to Monday... Your goals, still the same two goals, either continue logging your food without judgment. We're just talking about when we eat, how we were feeling when we eat, and how much we ate. We're not putting a label on it. We're not yucking it. It's just, this is what I ate. Or, so food logging, or continue to frame your goal. And this time, use the SMART format. So continue to frame your goal using the SMART format with that positive framing. Okay? And I will see you guys back on here Monday. I appreciate y'all. I was so excited. Little sidebar. I was so excited that I had 9 subscribers and 47 views. Because that means that 47 people have heard this and know that they are supported. And that's really what I want from this channel. I want y'all to know that you are perfection. You are perfection. And I appreciate you. And I just marvel that you're here. You're here on this journey with me. And it makes my heart so happy. So I appreciate you guys. And I will see y'all on Monday. Toodles.